Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Colleen. Um, today we are having a leftover dinner and it wasn't a fancy dinner to start with yesterday and I just thought that maybe I could end the meal with something um, a bit fancier and um, fresh and so today I'm going to take you through the steps of making cream puffs and uh, it's a very simple recipe as long as you're following the, the steps um, I can't see any reason why this would ever go wrong so let me gather up the first few ingredients that we need to get this started and then um, we'll begin making this recipe so I'll be right back after this <music> sized saucepan. This one's not very big. Um, it doesn't need to be very big for this recipe. This is called pat -a choux the kind of pastry that we're making, and it can be used for eclairs and puff, um, cream puffs and so many other things, some of them even savory. It's a really, um, what would you call it, versatile. It's a really versatile recipe that you can do a lot with. So we're going to set that aside for the moment. Into this pot, we need to add one cup of water, just one cup of water. And we're going to add a half a cup of butter. And we, um, the butter is, yes, an essential part of it. So if you don't normally use butter for your recipes, this is, probably the one time you need to. It, it is important to the recipe. Pat a choux, the kind of pastry that we're making today, is French. And while a lot of French recipes I've found can be uh, complicated, I found this one to be super simple. It's been probably a couple years since I've made one, but I think I still got it. Okay, so I have one cup of water, half a cup of butter, I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar. This pastry is not very sweet, and I am going to add not that much. I definitely don't need um, more than about a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to set that aside for now. Now, I'm going to take this along with a measured cup of flour over to my stove top and I'm going to bring you along over there so that you can uh, see the process. This is a recipe that lots of um, women made because it was so simple and it was something that could be considered quite fancy and depending how you formed it and made it and baked it and what you put on the inside of the pastry. So it didn't take a lot and most women had these simple ingredients, flour, water, butter, um, salt and sugar on the farm. And this also requires four eggs. And on the farms, they definitely had eggs. So those are the ingredients for this recipe. And then you've got the cream filling. And so this was stuff that they all had on hand. So let's head over to the stove. I'm going to use a wooden spoon for this. It takes a little muscle work, but not bad. Come on with me. Now we're going to get this butter melting and we want to just bring this little mixture to a boil. Then we'll add the flour. So let's give that a minute to uh, melt. This, this butter is really important to this recipe. It helps to um, the, the water and the butter together emulsify and make a lovely base for this pastry. Now we've got that boiling. So I'm going to just take this off the st stove top, just off to the edge. 
I hope you can still see this. Yes. And I'm going to dump in one cup of flour. So the same amount of flour as I had water to start with. And I'm going to mix this, probably making you dizzy by now. I'm going to shut this stove top off and I am going to mix this up. Now, we want to try and get all the lumps out of it. If you have any in there, work this around until you have a ball that forms and it doesn't stick to the pan anymore. Now that the burner is off and I've got it mixed up pretty well, I'm just going to set it back on the burner and I'm going to mix it until I get just a little bit of, what would you call it, a glaze, glaze of flour on the bottom of the pot. That means that enough of the moisture has cooked out that we can stop doing this. So this may be the toughest part. So I had a lump in there. Now, I hope you can see that, but there's a bit of a glaze on the bottom. That means this is done enough. So we're going to take it off the stove and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, <clears throat> there's, as you can imagine, tons of different ways to do this. You can now, that I've let the pastry cool for about four to five minutes, four minutes I think around there. And I'm going to transfer it now into my food processor. And then I'm going to show you what the bottom of this pot looks like. Just maybe I am, so you can get an idea of what it should look like. There. Now you could leave that in the bowl and start to add the eggs and mix them one by one by hand. But that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of a tedious job. Or you can add them into your food processor, add the eggs one at a time. I have four eggs cracked into this cup. And I am just going to give this a mix until it's well mixed through. It doesn't take too long. You just want to make sure when you look in that all of the egg has been incorporated into the dough. Now we're going to go for the second yolk, second egg, sorry, it's a whole egg. Do the same thing again. You keep checking as you're going along. Now if you feel like the egg, the side needs to be scraped down, which I feel that needs, that needs to happen right now. I'm just going to grab my little spatula scraper and I'm going to scrape the edges down. Put the last egg in there. I'm going to mix this good. spatula. Now you should have, it should be stringy like this. That's when you know it's just, it's right. It almost forms a V off of there. This might even be a little bit tight, but not bad. I think we're done. So now I'm going to take the light out of here. You can transfer this to a bowl if it makes it easier for you. So you don't end up with the pastry going down through the middle of the hole as you're trying to scoop it. Now at this point, if you have a pastry bag, which I do, um, you could definitely use your pastry bag to, to pipe out your little bits of pastry. I am going to do it differently because I want you to see 
the other ways that you can do this without having anything fancy. And I remember the first few times I made these, I didn't have a pastry bag. And so I did it this way. I did it um, with, I think I just did it with a tablespoon, honestly. It's one of those things you do not need fancy equipment. Most of us have the fancy equipment these days, but you don't need it. Um, I am going to fill my little cookie scoop about two thirds full. And I'm gonna drop these little bits down. And I think this will bake around. I'm not sure. Let's just see what we end up with. You want to keep them as round as possible. If you've got any little pointy bits sticking up, then you want to put a little water on your finger and press them down because you don't want them to burn. I'm going to walk right over to my oven because I forgot to turn it on and I'm going to turn it on to 375 degrees. Yeah, it's good if you can get them into the oven as soon as possible after you've gone through this. Now you can make these perfectly round if you're using a piping bag. Perfectly round. And because of the kind of pastry it is, it's still going to um, puff up into different weird shapes. So don't be freaked out by that. That is perfectly normal. You can also, if this makes too many for you, you can cut this recipe in half without any problem whatsoever. Just use the recipe that I've provided here and um, half the ingredients. Now I think this should make around 16, but um, we'll see. Set that back in my pot again. And I'm just going to get on to work in here. These, well, they don't look like much right now. These will swell up and be beautiful big cream puffs. And people will think you bought them at the store they will be just fantastic. Now the last few here are a little bit bigger because I'm realizing I'm running out of room and this should be an 18. Let's see, do I have one more in here? Yes, I think I do. Where am I going to put one more? Right here. Okay, now if you weren't watching, I would clear that bowl out completely. But for time's sake, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to wet my fingers and I'm going to go around. You could do this with an egg wash if you want. Just make sure that there's no uh, parts sticking up or flipped out because the part, you don't want the edges to be um, vulnerable to burning. So just go around and make sure that no curly cues are there. And I think that's it. Now these are going to go into a 375 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes or until they're golden brown. So when they come out of the oven, I'll bring you back and show you what they look like. We'll set them to cool and then we'll go to, go to work on the filling, which is really simple. And I will see you in a moment. Well, I have them out of the oven, light as a feather, uh, rose up beautifully. One of the things that you'll notice as they start to cool down is that some of them may sort of collapse because there's a big air pocket in there. But we're going to fill that pocket.
pock it up with some cream. Now you could make a pastry cream or you're, you could do what I'm gonna do today and I'm just going to whip some cream and I'm going to fill them with whipped cream. So I am going to whip up one and a half cups of cream, which means I need to get a little more out of the fridge in this little bowl along with um, three to four. There's, there's not really very much sugar in these, so I think I'll add four teaspoons of icing sugar or powdered sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla. But I won't add those right away. I'm gonna get this started to whip before I add those things. And then I'm gonna whip them till they come to a steep, steep, a steep, <laughs> hold that mouth, till they come to a stiff peak. I should have chosen a bigger bowl, I think. I feel like I'm at about halfway, so I'm going to add the sugar now and the vanilla. So four tablespoons of powdered sugar. And about a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'll go back to mixing. Well, I've got them mixed up good and firm. You want to be careful right there because if you mix them too much, you end up with butter. So you've got to be a bit cautious there. I'm just going to grab a serrated knife and I am going to open this up. And can you see there's just like a big air pocket in there that's perfectly risen and cooked. Now, if you were being fancy and using a piping bag, you could definitely write here, put this into your piping bag, put on a fancy tip, and you would be ready to go. Or if you don't have a piping bag, you could do it this way. Use a spoon and open up your cut. You could even cut this entirely in half if you chose. Put in a good dollop, because remember you're filling the top space too. In this one I'm going to add, and some of them, I'm going to add a raspberry to the center. And that's exactly how I'm going to do them. And just repeat. Some of them won't have as big a air gaps as others, but um, you can certainly stuff them or overstuff them and you can even just put the raspberry at the opening on one side if you wanted to get really fancy you could open it all the way so that you have two pieces fill each side and then make sure that you've got a good amount of filling and you can add more than one raspberry maybe three and then put the lid on and you have raspberries sticking out from all over now I think this is delicious I think that you can see what you could do. It doesn't have to be raspberries. You don't have to add any fruit if you don't want to. Strawberries are a good addition. Now I'm just going to take my little sieve and some powdered sugar, keeping in mind that there's no sugar in the inside the, the dough, just inside the whipped cream that's inside the dough. So I'm going to <clears throat> generously coat these. And this is what they look like. I hope that you found this useful. 
I know it's not the traditional fancy way to make a cream puff, but it will certainly be a wonderful finish to today's leftover meal from yesterday and be nice and fresh. Now, I'm making these in the afternoon. I'm gonna fill them and I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator so that they're ready after dinner tonight. They will hold up really well in the refrigerator. I hope you've enjoyed this, folks, and if you have, that you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. Give this video a like, comment below, that would be fantastic, and I will put the recipe for um, these cream puffs in the description box below the in the first comment so that um, you have the recipe to follow along. So I will see you again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.